So in this video, I want to talk about the negative aspects and some of the positive aspects of Alia sometimes has her feelings in Russian. So under ten, understand the context here. One of the things that I've wanted to do on the channel and one of the changes that I've wanted to do on the channel is get more philosophical and more analytical into stories, characters, world building and stuff like that. I want to get much more into the weeds of that and get philosophical, deeper, etc. And I also want to, in this specific video, look at the devil's advocate, look at some of the negative aspects of the story, some of the criticisms, and weigh them up. Because I do think there is some fair criticisms of Alia in her personality, and I will weigh up where I agree and where I disagree. So I kind of want to go sort of that different avenue of it. Because I've done a lot of videos just defending what I think is good about the series and why I disagree. And yeah, I've spoken a little bit about some of the, the things that I find as a problem, but I want to way up some of that. And again, it's going to be hard for me to really kind of go down the negative, because again, I have a general bias that I like the series, I like the light novels, but I try to be balanced as best as possible. And I do f understand where some of the issues are, were and are, and one of those is of course Alia herself. Her personality is kind of a little bit difficult to deal with. But the thing is, is this isn't exactly an error in writing. I, I, I could see, and I have seen some people say that the writer is bad at writing, and I'm like, no, no, it's just you don't like the decisions being made in the writing. And I think one of those is that, yeah, she is not exactly an easy character to deal with. Some people don't like her, but that is deliberate. It is a deliberate decision that the writer has made, and it is one of the most things that is aware in the story, like the main male protagonist, the one that she's in love with, that she's in denial about, and that's another whole issue, is that has pointed out that she can be kind of difficult to approach. Her social skills are not good. That's why they call her the icy princess. So that's the issue is because she is that way some people don't like her and don't connect with her as easily most of the time people only connect with the the russian flirting and the the, the original episode and the snippets of her putting on the sock and everything because of that fun clippable memeable kind of things after that people kind of didn't like her and because yuki is such a lovable character because of her outlandish, silly behavior and her joking demeanor. People have really resonated with her and been like, yeah, she's fun, she's exciting, I love her as a character. And that I do as well, I love her as a character. So she stands out a lot. I don't think it's a bad thing that as a supporting character, she's amazingly well written. I think it's stupid, the idea that we shouldn't have supporting characters, which I've seen some people, by the way, say that animes and stories like this should not have supporting characters. And then they tried to use it as a comparison to showman animes like Dragon Ball Z and One Piece and My Hero. And, all, and I'm just like, yeah, no, no, you're just being stupid at that point. But at the same time, I can understand why some people feel a little bit almost whiplash because this is a light novel that has extremely strong supporting characters, like really strong. And Yuki is one of those that is very high up. And then, of course, you've got Alia's sister. Now, <laughs> season two is going to make this even worse if it happens, if and when, because she just is an absolute beast as far as like charm goes. She's extremely adorable, extremely charming, extremely cute, motherly like. She's got a lot of love and affection. And I saw the signs in it where the story was going to go with this. And it feels like I have to now pretend I didn't say these things because they've come true in the light novels. Is that she is, I'm just going to say it because I predicted it. She is his past friend. She's in love with him. And so her connection with him is much more deeper than Alia's. And so as a supporting character, she stands out substantially as well. And I think Alia, of course, I believe will win at the end. And that's obvious. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of building. There's a lot of growth that needs to be done with her. And that's a long journey. And I don't think it's going to be an easy journey for her. Because you've got all these other characters that are extremely more charming. And I think a lot of people also prefer female characters that are a little bit more agreeable and a little bit less 
Sundere. Like, people love Sundere's, but they don't like their Sundere's being the main female love interest. They generally like them being the side characters that they generally fall in love with. But even in this case, Alia can be a little bit prickly. And a little bit hot and cold. And that's something that I've complained about even in the light novels. That she just annoys me because she plays hot and cold a lot of the times. And she isn't honest with her own feelings. Which even her own sister points out that she is in denial. So again, the story is very self-aware of these character traits that she has. It is pointed out. It's not like this is a writer error. This is deliberate decisions that the writer has made as far as her personality goes. Which is why I think some people don't like the series. is because it's more that they just don't like her. I think if she was a lot more agreeable, a lot more less jagged in her personality or icy is in the way the light novel puts it, I think people would like her a little bit more. I think if the flirtatiousness was a little bit more prevalent, a little bit more stand at, like, a lot more there, I think people would also like her as well. But because there's not as many clippable, memeable moments, people do have a tendency to not like her as much. Now, the main male protagonist, his personality just doesn't matter, which sounds stupid, but it really doesn't. He can be a cardboard cutout and most people don't really care as long as there's an easy self-insert. Most people generally kind of prefer that. But in this case, I've definitely seen some criticisms of people saying that he has no backstory, which is just factually incorrect. Now, again, I'm talking about other comments before some people think that I'm referring to them, but there have been some comments that where some people have said, yeah, there's no backstory. And it's like, okay, there is. But mostly the comments were entailed to they were just saying yeah his backstory doesn't exist and he shouldn't have supporting characters because the supporting characters are the ones that get all the backstory and all the flesh and i'm like yeah it's a bit of a weird one but i think with him i think his backstory is one of those that is told through other people and I can see why some people may not like that but i do personally like the fact that it's done in a different way i don't like info dumping all at once. I like trickle effect and I think it's nice like that and I do feel like yes I can understand that maybe not everything about his backstory has been offloaded right now but more of it will be offloaded as time goes on but there's also this other issue and this is something that I've seen as a criticism is some people say that no one knows her overall objective. Her main objective is to be with him and I'm like that's not true. Like I've seen that as a comment where they've just said that her only objective is to be with him and there's no other objective which makes her boring. And I'm like, no, because her objective is always to be the student council, like the top the top position, which is why there's a rivalry between her and Yuki. That's the whole thing about Yuki and her being in rivalry positions is because they both want that same position and he's there to help her and not his sister anymore. That That's like the whole main goal for her. Now, there's a difference between what her goals are from a story's character's perspective, or from her pers like a character's perspective, and then a story's goal is to have them come together. And that's the thing, there's a difference between what she wants and what the story is about. The goals are very different. The, the story's goal, the author's goal in the story itself, is to get them to come together. That's the end objective. Because we know that that's the point of them coming together. But I've seen some people say that, no, her objective is to be with him. It's like, no, that's the story's objective, not her objective. They're separate. And I think sometimes people can't differentiate the difference between those. And so they try to jam them as one goal, like put both uh, got the same goal. No, they're very different. Her objective is to be at that position of student council. It's just the story is putting them together and her achieve will get to that as she gets to the student council clearly because as she gets closer to winning that position and beating yuki she will become a much more lovable character she will grow and develop the same for him is that the reason why he doesn't want to reciprocate feelings is because he has an inferiority complex now that is something that will get delved into much more later on in season two light novels most of you already know what i've been talking about but he has an inferiority complex he's highly insecure he's got trauma he's got issues I'm not going to delve into any more of that because it's already hinted at in season one but there's a lot more to d delve into with season two it's not like i'm giving spoilers here because the the first season has already hinted and shown some of this it's just season two will dive much more deeper into it and then you've got Yuki, who's the main villain of the story, which, might I add, she is literally called herself the villain, the end boss. 
So before anyone says that that doesn't make, it's like, yeah, she is role playing that position. It's one of the funniest things I find is that she is this massive otaku weeb that has put herself as the villain of the story because that's what she wants. And it's before anyone says that she will be upset with, and this was a comment I saw. I saw someone being like, oh, well, Yuki's going to be upset when Alia and her brother end up beating her and clobbering her. And I'm like, no, that's literally what she wants. She wants them to win. She's just playing the villain. And as her own maid says, you're go the villain generally loses. And she goes, yes, I know. She doesn't care about winning. She cares about getting her old brother back. That's what she wants. She wants her brother to be happy and to be his old self, his old motivated self, not this secluded, depressed, kind of emo, self-hating individual. She wants her old brother back and she wants him to be happy. And if that means being with Alia, then she wants that to happen. She's pushing that. She That's why she's playing the villain, because she wants them to work together to work out their own feelings, because she can clearly see that they both like each other. She just knows that they've both just been stupid about how they're going about it. And that's the thing. The anime's already highlighted all these things, but I think some people haven't seen those. Either it's because people aren't watching the anime properly, or they're watching it for clips, whatever that is. But I just feel like some people have missed the point of the story. And I guess maybe it's because Alia's character isn't as lovable, because as I said before, she is a little bit prickly. And because of the other characters, they are very, very, very strong. No one can deny that. Yuki and Masha, Masha, Nasha, are extremely lovable. And as time goes on, some people are going to really like the maid as well, because the maid is just hilarious. She's a masochist. And she has some really great, like, line, like, one-liners where she just says the weirdest of things, and you're just like, huh? And I think some people are going to mistake her as a love interest when she's not, because she's not a love interest, because I've seen some people say it's a harem. It's not a harem, because one, Yuki is not serious. Two, the maid just says the stupidest things, because, like I said, she's a masochist, and she's very unself-aware of what she says. She just says whatever they want. Like, she serves them. And there's a funny quote in the light novels where she basically just says that she's willing to bear his children purely to serve his needs. But she has no romantic interest. So maybe there's a, maybe later on they might push a love interest down there, but I feel like that would feel too forced. I kind of like what they're doing with her, where she's more just like really oblivious to things, and she's not a potential love rival, because I don't want it to turn into Nasika. I don't want them just to throw in a new love interest every couple of volumes just to add a roadblock. Alia and her sister being that love interest makes sense because of the past, and I'm very curious to see where her sister goes about it, because clearly she has a lot of feelings for him, and her tug of war is going to be, I think, something what people will like. Again, I'm not really spoiling anything here. It's obvious stuff that's already been hinted in the first season, and it's stuff that will be delved into later on, but I'm not really saying anything other than there's stuff to be shown. So, I understand why some people don't like the series. Because at the end of the day, you've got to like Alia's personality. And that, I think, is the biggest glaring issue. Is she is not as lovable as she started off with. And because the anime was marketed very heavy on the whole idea of her hiding her feelings in Russia, which I saw some people say that they, that should be like the main focus of the story is just her doing that. And I'm like, no, because it would get boring if every episode there was like 10 moments where she said something in Russian. Like she does it quite frequently, to be honest. But I feel like if you overdid it, it would become repetitious and kind of lose its charm. I think doing it occasionally and enough to kind of keep it funny but not overdo it and oversaturate it I think is a good balance because if they do oversaturate it again it loses its charm and I think that's a negative aspect to a story is if you overuse the gimmick which many romance animes do where they add in a gimmick and they overuse the gimmick because it's the main thing driving the series. And then people just kind of don't really care about it. That's just how I see it. But I think the glaring issue is the fact that there are two supporting cast characters that are extremely lovable and connectable. And because they're much more agreeable and not as prickly, 
people prefer them over Alia, and I think because it's clear who's going to win also, people don't really care, because let's say, for example, let's say Yuki was a, a non-blood sister, she was like ad adopted in or something, so she was a potential love rival, and all three girls, we know that they're in love with him, and they're all vying for his love, but we don't know who's going to win. I think then people would be much more interested, because then they would pick a side, and they would barrack for it, but because Alia is the team that's the, the one that's going to win, everyone knows what they have to barrack for her. There's no point barracking for Yuki, because she's not going to win, because she's one, blood-related, and two, she's not being serious, and then second of all, Alia's sister is clearly not going to win as much as even I actually want her to win, I know. Crazy. I want her to win, and I want to talk about that in Volume 5, why I want her to win. But it's one of those where it's like, you know Alia's going to win. So you have to barrack for the winning team. Otherwise, you're on the losing teams. And so instantly, everyone has to go, okay, well, I have to like Alia. But then she's not as lovable. So instantly, people get turned off from the light novel. I think if each of the girls had a chance to win... Some you would all pick your own team, and then the series would be much more popular because then people would just go, yeah, 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 give more attention to Yuki. Screw Alia, she's boring. Ha ha ha! Great story, great story. Because Yuki would then be the main one that everyone would cheer on, and then if they gave it to a bit to Alia's sister, Masha, then people would be like, yeah, 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 she's so amazing. We love her, and then they change teams. And then if Alia got more attention, suddenly people jump to that, and they just change whoever's the popular one for the time. But because Alia is the winner, and we know she's the winner, having the other girls getting attention feels like you're kind of being gi given a taste of something that you're never going to get in its entirety. Because it's like, oh, Yuki's so great, she's so fun, she's so charismatic. And then you're like, oh, but she's not going to win anyway, so what, why do I care? I think that's an issue as well. Because you look at a many, many har harem series, an example of one that's currently airing right now, Cafe May Terrace, you can pick one of those girls. You pick your favorite girl and you just barrack for that. And so people will like that much more because of that, even though that barely gets any attention now because of its different reasons. But there are many harem animes out there that get that. As if you were in a harem series and there are five other girls and you know who's going to win out of them, people just stop caring. Because you already know who the winner is. And I think that's the issue. Is there's so many good girls in there that people are fighting over. That, but they're just like, who cares? They're not going to win anyway. So they instantly lose attachment to them. That's what I think the big issue is. And I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Where your thought process is on that. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe. And I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.